Alright guys, in this video we're going to be talking about the laws of exponents and more specifically multiplying them. Now just a little recap, remember that with exponents we're indicating that we're taking a certain number or a variable, in this case x, and raising it to a certain power. Meaning that we're going to take that variable or number and multiply it by itself that many times. So if I have x cubed, I'm saying that I'm going to take x and multiply it by itself three times. Now, don't get confused by thinking it's this. x cubed isn't three times x. That's a totally different uh, term or expression. We're not multiplying three times the variable x. We're multiplying x by itself three times, okay? So keeping that in mind, let's take a look at our first example and how we approach multiplying um, exponents. So for my first example, I have 4x cubed times x to the 6. Make this a little. There we go. Okay. The first thing that is definitely going to help you or keep things organized and clean and make your life a little easier. If you don't see a coefficient, which is any number other than 1, next to the um, the variable itself, feel free to put a 1 there. Because 1 times x to the 6th is x to the 6th. Sometimes the coefficient just isn't there representing itself. So go ahead and put a 1 there if there's no other numer uh, coefficient in front of the variable. The next thing is, you want to break this apart. To make things easy for yourself, do things um, separately. So start with your whole numbers first, then your variables. So let's start with 4 times 1, and that will take care of our whole numbers. So we have 4 times 1 is equal to 4. Not too bad. Now let's look at the exponents. Remember, when, I, when, we're mul when we're multiplying exponents, we're going to say that we're taking 4 times x times x times x, which is x cubed. Then we're going to multiply that by x times x times x times x times x times x, times x in a very long expanded out form. But what this shows you is now... If you think about it, how many x's are being multiplied by each other? Which will allow us to figure out the power that we're trying to solve for, or um, add. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 x's being multiplied by each other. So that's going to give us 4 times x to the ninth power. Now instead of doing this every single time for every variable, Notice what we did here. So we have 4x to the ninth power. We took the summation of x cubed and x to the sixth, and we got x to the ninth. So what we did in realistic uh, reality is we did 4 times x to the 3 plus 6 exponent. And we got 4x to the 9. Okay? So when we're multiplying exponents, we're going to be adding the exponents. And that will allow us to solve the total um, product of the variables. So our final answer is 4x to the 9. Let's look at our next example. Example number two. I have x to the seven 
times y to the fifth times 8x cubed y squared. Now, again, make things easy for yourself. Go ahead and put a 1 here. Because this here and this, they are individual terms. Even though they're being multiplied, they're still individual terms. So go ahead and put the 1 there and make things easy for yourself. Um, again, in multiplication, it can be displayed in multiple ways. Sometimes it will be a dot or a star. Sometimes they'll be right next to each other um, by parentheses. So another way to display multiplication is like this. Okay. But first, for now, we're going to just stick with the top uh, notation, but just to show you, it can be displayed by parentheses. Now, going back to the example, again, make it easy on yourself. Break it apart. Don't try to tackle the whole thing at once. You start with your whole numbers. So 8 times 1 is 8. x to the 7th times x to the 3. Do the x's next? and then worry about the y's, okay? So again, it's just a summation of the exponents. So what we have is if we take x to the m times x to the n, we get x to the m plus n. And that's our rule for multiplying uh, exponents. So we'll take x to the seventh times x cubed, which will give us x to the 7 plus 3, which is equal to x to the 10. Okay, let's tackle the y's. y to the 5th times y squared, y to the 5th times y squared is equal to the summation of 5 plus y plus, plus 2, so 5 plus 2 equals y to the same. Now remember, each part that we solve for is going to be multiplied. So we solve for our whole numbers, which is 8. We solve for our exponent, which is x, our x exponent, which is x to the tenth, and then we solve for the y exponent, which is y to the seventh. So our final answer is just going to be eight x to the tenth, y to the seventh. Okay. All right. Let's look at another example. So let's look at this third example. Now, this one's going to be a little trickier. So we have 3x to the fifth times 6x times 2x squared. Now, again, remember, keep things easy for yourself. Start off with your whole numbers. In this case, we don't have to put a 1 anywhere because each of our terms has a coefficient greater than 1, so it's there. But again, same steps. So let's do the whole numbers first. So 3 times 6 is 18, times 2 is 36. Okay. Now let's look at our variables. There's only one, so it's just x. But what you're going to notice right away is, you see, this middle term, this x doesn't have an exponent. That's okay. Um, in reality, it does. It's just not shown. So anytime a variable is not raised to a power, we understand it as it is to the first power. Okay? So now, again, we can go ahead and do our um, 
adding of the exponents because they're all being multiplied. Again, it can be mul um, displayed in many ways. The dots are here again. So all of this is being multiplied together. So again, we're just going to add all of the exponents. So we have x to the fifth plus 1 plus 2. And then the 5 came from the fifth power. The 1 came from the first power. And then the 2 came from the second power. And that's going to give us a total power of x to the 8th. So our final answer, again, remember we're just multiplying everything together, is 36x to the 8th. Okay? Let's look at one more example, because up to this point, we've seen only positive exponents. Now, I'm sure the question has definitely arised, can you have negative exponents? And the answer is yes, absolutely. So let's look at one of these examples. If I had 3x to the negative 2 power times 3x to the fifth power. Now, negative exponents are very special because they have a, um, their notation is different in, in, um, in how they are in certain aspects. If it's in the numerator, and as it, as it expresses a, neg a negative exponent, remember that anything is always, if it's not in a rational expression, anything is always over 1. It always is over 1. So, keeping that in mind, 3x squared, or 3x to the negative 2, is equal to 3 over x squared. If you have your negative exponent in your numerator, it's going to be a positive in your denominator. Likewise, if you have um, 3 over x to the negative 2, it's the same as saying 3x squared. Okay, so let's uh, approach this one the same way, just keeping that in mind. Now, keep things easy for yourself and don't put this in the denominator only because since you're going to be adding these together, um, you can still do the summation that we did before. Um, you can actually go ahead and put um, the three and then the x squared in the bottom because it would give you the same answer. What would happen is you'd have the three x squared, uh, the x squared down here, and then you'd have three x to the fifth. And then we'll be talking about this in another video where you can divide these exponents and it will give you the same value as if you were to multiply them. But because of the negative exponent, let's focus on that. So we have three times three, again, tackling our whole numbers first. So three times three equals nine. And then our exponents, again, it's the same thing. Negative exponents have no exceptions. So we have x to the negative two plus positive five. Again, go ahead and for housekeeping purposes, go ahead and put a positive in front of the exponent if it helps you. So negative 2 plus a positive 5 is a x to the positive 3 or x cubed. So our final answer, again, all of these are being multiplied, is 9x cubed. Okay? But those are the examples that I wanted to show you guys. Again, these are multiplying exponents. Again, just keep in mind that you're taking the exponents and adding them together. Whether it be positive or negative exponents, there's, they're following the same rules. Always start with the whole numbers first. Keep things easy for yourself. Um, if you guys have any questions, as always, please never hesitate to contact me, okay? Thanks for watching.